Good morning. Morning. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> welcome to Family Jewels. Uh, still kind of getting stuff situated here, but we wanted to at least get started. So, since, anyway, since we're late, right? <laughs> what's what's fifteen seconds going to matter? Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, um, welcome to Family Jewels. I'm Colton Bartell, and I'm Audie Bartell, and we are both graduate gemologists here at Suzanne's Custom Jewelers. And today we're going to talk about blue topaz. Is long as actually we're just going to talk about topaz in general yeah but we've got a lot more blue than we do the other colors so anyway going to be talking about topaz um we thought we'd covered this recently but apparently not yeah. so we're going to go over it now as long as he's not like flipping these things <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are bigger than others. It's like oh, trying that's... to trap an ice cube over here. Yeah, I got that one. With a bar of soap. <laughs> Carly, so, go, get so, me, go get me another one of these. Anyway, anyway, we've got a lot of stones to show and talk about. Most everybody, I would think, is probably familiar with topaz in some form or another. Uh, probably everybody has seen but blue not, topaz. But not all forms. But not all forms, no. And, one of them and we, maybe not everybody. <laughs> and one of them we don't actually have, so. Right. But we've got a good variety here that we're going to show you guys and talk a little bit about. So, um, topaz is actually a pretty um, widely used gem in the jewelry industry. It's extremely prevalent as blue as in its blue variety. Mm. Um but it's really popular for a few reasons. One, there's a pretty good amount of it available out there. Um, two, it's got good durability and hardness, um, so it wears really well. So I know a little Mo's pecking scale. It is a... Uh, I believe it's a six and a half to seven. It's an eight. It's an eight. <laughs> it's been a little while. But... Um, <clears throat> It goes topaz and then sapphire. And oh, yeah, that's color. right. But um, what's really nice about it is the most popular variety is blue, which across the board in any colored stone, blue sells 10 to 1 over any other color. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really popular. comes in a bunch of different shades. comes in a ton of different sizes. Best we could show you. A ton of different shapes. And it's fairly inexpensive. Some shapes that are really unusual. We don't really have a name for them. Yeah. Yeah. We just call them fantasy cut. Yes. Yeah. And so. I've seen I've seen Topaz what is it Tucson one time and they had a bathtub. Mm hmm And they had it about I don't know, probably eight, nine inches, maybe ten inches deep of just blue topaz stone. They were still in plastic bags, but Yeah. So, like, I don't know how many pounds that would have been, but a lot. Yeah. Well, and I thought it was cool, you know, the first time that I ever went to the to the JCK and AGTA show in Las Vegas, and we walk into the AGTA, and there's, like, plastic tables, like, you'd use for a picnic or something set up, and there's, like, bowls of topaz. It looked like you go into a candy store, and it's got yeah. little scoops in there, and then they got little bags on the side and a scale. It's we, like it's like the produce department of the jewelry show. <laughs> and we do have, we do have a customer that would literally think that, you know, that it was something that was edible. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's so very she, true. Would, she would have really got into that. Oh, I, I think her mouth would have been watering walking <laughs> through the doors. <laughs> but yeah, it was it's crazy. So so some of these stones like like topaz, peridot, citrine. Um, amethyst, some of these that you know occur in in larger quantities and in larger sizes, and a lot of calibrated cut stuff. You know, we can you know, we go to those shows like the AGTA show or the Tucson Gem and Mineral show, and you walk into these booths where they literally have these bowls and practically buckets of stones with a scoop stuck in the top, and you're like, okay. Like, and you basically buy them, you know, they, they weigh them out, but it's basically like you're buying them by the pound, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you know, they are a lot 
more prevalent than diamond or most of the stones out there, but they're still a really pretty stone and they still hold value pretty well. Um, especially so, when we get into the other colors besides blue. So let's see here. Let's, uh, I, I'll just, I'll just show some, we'll just kind of start out. This would be like a lighter, lighter color. Maybe it would be like a light, light Swiss blue maybe. Mm -hmm. And so that's one. So they're going to get maybe just a little bit. This is probably true Swiss blue. So you kind of get an idea of how much. A little difference, a little difference in size. Turn it around. There yeah, you go. Help a little bit. Huh? Yep. <laughs> so, and then this is kind of what I call Windex blue. <laughs> Windex blue. So it gets even a little deeper color. So kind of, kind of give you an idea. We'll go. So it's getting a little bluer yet. Yep. And then this is London blue. And it's gonna have a little more blue. This stone's maybe not quite as bright. It's a checkerboard cut. Yeah, and you can see the little checkerboard facets on the top of that stone, which is really cool. Yeah. That's something that's really nice with Topaz is the cutting right. styles vary a lot. And then, and he's talking about- This one about... has a millennial cut on a trillion shape. Yeah. So you can see those like concave facets that are on there are really cool. Yeah really makes that stone bright this one's going to be in a custom pendant mm -hmm. yeah yeah so a little bit of swiss blue yeah and then we have a, a ring that's done with swiss blue colton says it'll be a little harder to pick this up but it's not bad it's not bad definitely yeah. easier to see the larger stones the most of the time blue topaz is real clean mm -hmm. um and you know variety of sizes and shapes variety of calibrated sizes um, so we can do just about anything it's almost like setting setting blue diamond i mean you can it comes in a host of calibrated sizes or whatever so yeah so talking about kind of the the rough um topaz so this uh, this occurs in the orthorhombic crystal system, which well, that will help them a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get a little technical, but um, this is actually a really good example of a terminated crystal in matrix. And what we mean by matrix is the host rock. Um, I believe this is albite, albite that it's uh, so it's a feldspar mm -hmm, that this is in, and so you can actually see this is a fairly large, fairly large crystal here. And this one's got more of kind of a, a brownish yellow tone to it. And a lot of this stuff that's like this or that's colorless will actually get treated. And basically what they'll do is they bombard or radiate it. Yeah. And then heat it. With a radiation and actually turn the crystals blue. Um, so they do have a cooling period because they're hot. They're they basically but they, also, are, they also heat them too. Yeah. But um, that cooling period is mainly for the, the radiation treatment to kind of die down on them because they can be hazardous when they first come out of treatment. So there's only a few places in the world that so are... So wear like your sunglasses or something like that? No. Oh. No. It, it, it'd burn you. Uh -oh. Yeah. So um, there's only a few places in the world that actually treat these uh, to get them to this color that can legally do it, I guess. Uh, one of those, I believe, still going right now is at the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, last I knew they were still. And I've actually there. I've actually been there. They uh, <clears throat> they do a lot of at the time, a lot of treatment that that would have been back. I'm going to say in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that would send it in and then for one reason or another they didn't pick it up or pay for the treatment so actually they had a, I guess you'd say a sealed bid thing and that's probably where I've seen the most blue topaz because it was like I don't know I probably looked at a ton 
literally 2,000 pounds at least of blue topaz. Yeah. But. So what we're going to show you here, this is actually some of the, the color treated and enhanced uh, stones. And let's see. Yeah, so whenever these blue stones that were in this picture that I'm getting ready to show you, when this picture was taken, these blue stones were actually still radioactive. So they mm. still needed to cool a little bit more. Which one but, is this bunch here? Yeah. Or are those blue ones? So uh, of this picture here that's got the multicolored topaz in it, um, the blue ones were actually still radioactive from treatment. The other ones had already cooled. Oh, so from, these are treated also? These were actually also treated too. Really? I yeah. didn't know they could do Oh, these were, treated, these were treated diamonds. Oh. These were treated topaz. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the bottom five stones, these are actually um, treated diamonds that were done through the same process and these are actually the the treated topaz so these were actually when this photo was taken um, according to this little still caption hot. here they were still hot so they were still radioactive and uh, from the treatment whereas the the diamonds down here had gone through their cooling period but that that those stones mm -hmm. uh, where you're calling it cooling they actually cool fairly quickly mm -hmm. so yeah so you don't have to worry about none of this stuff being radioactive because it's all, this is all controlled real closely by, what, what do they call the... They've got a Geiger counter, basically. Well, I know, but they got a segment of the government, what's that called? Oh, yeah, the... Whatever it is. Yeah. Atomic and Energy Commission or something. Yeah. It's got some little letter things. Yeah. I, I don't remember what one that is. Yeah, they're they're closely monitoring those so that you know whenever these do enter the trade, they're not there cause is, problems. There is some naturally occurring blue topaz, but not mm -hmm. very much. Yeah, and I don't know. What, I'm going to say maybe I've seen some, but I don't know for sure that I have. And I don't know that you can. There's a difference now between natural or let me get my yeah appraisal messed up here oops <laughs> uh, so I, I you know and blue topaz is fairly inexpensive you yeah know, you can get large stones and so yeah so like a lot of the stuff before it's treated is like this so this is just natural colorless topaz um, most of the time what they're going to do is they're actually going to treat the crystals and then or they may just do like a blocking on the stone which blocking is where they're cutting out basically the rudimentary shape and facet because a lot of times well, we some of these like, treatments can actually what i saw was preforms yeah so preform or blocking kind of the same thing um what what will happen is during this treatment it can actually burn some of the facets and stuff so then they have to actually you know, be polished polish. again anyway so they don't go and do a full polish of the facets and everything until after the treatment is completed and so one way you know with other stones we can we can actually tell if a stone's been treated or not is we can actually see burned facets um, very yeah. rare that that ever actually happens anymore I, yeah i don't know that uh, i've ever seen that so yeah I, the only time i've actually ever seen it was in class and i think it was just that they set those stones aside just for example but well, they, actually seeing it in the trade anymore is pretty much might, non-existent they must have set them after i was there so i yeah. didn't get to see it well i did i feel special now. <laughs> <laughs> you know it was a boo-boo yeah but um we can show you some of the pictures of some of the mining techniques. So this is actually a topaz mine in Brazil. Um, you see actually some of them washing through some of the tailings and stuff here. And then this is actually uh, at the uh, Capau mine where... Is that like an explosive mine? <laughs> Capau mine, yeah. <clears throat> so um, basically what this is saying is these guys are actually sorting through the topaz rough that's going through here on this belt. And of that rough, about only 1% is gem quality. Really? Yeah. So, um, so what do they do with the rest of it? I don't know. Um, I've never actually heard what they do with the rest of that. 
I guess they could use it as an abrasive, but I've never heard of a topaz abrasive because it's fairly hard. Yeah. It's harder than garnet. Yeah. So, which garnet is used as an abrasive in, in some cases. So, mm -hmm. like emery and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, emery um, is sapphire. Or emery is, yeah, emery is sapphire. But I have, they have had garnet, garnet, paper. garnet paper, yeah. But, um, yeah, there's, you know, if, if only 1% of that stuff is actually gem quality, that kind of speaks to the volume of... That's a, topaz that's a that's pretty nice there. blue. To get yeah. to that that blue, you just don't see much of it. Yeah, to this dark blue. So a lot of the natural crystal itself has has a lot to do with it, but um, like this one, we can show you here. Um, this is a combination of irradiation and heat treatment to get to this color. Um, but a lot of the stuff ends up being a little bit lighter like this. Yeah. But they actually have quite a bit of control over over the colors. But the other thing is, too, is you got a lot larger quantities that's going through there that they're treating. Um, so blue is the most common one that you're going to see in the trade. But um, topaz does come in a lot of other colors. And one of the rarest ones is red. Which that's the one we don't have. Yeah. And so, I've, only seen, I've only seen a couple. Yeah. Actually... One that that I thought was like ruby red, actually more like spinel red. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, my understanding, only one mine in Brazil produces this red, but I think maybe there are others. But yeah, actually the one I saw was redder than either one of those two. Yeah. So what I want to show you, these are red, orange, and yellow, and, and bicolor, and pink, and pink. We, got, uh, we have a topaz, pink. yeah. So these are going to be considered red topaz, um, even though they have a little bit more of a pink modifier to them. They're still considered a red topaz. And then we actually have we've got orange here, yellow topaz, which is uh, these are going to be imperial. And you've got uh, some pink topaz here, and then at the bottom we actually have a bicolor topaz. So you've got kind of pink on one end and a, like an orangish yellow on the other end. And I've actually seen a lavender one. Yeah, yeah. I, I've i seen some of these. You know, a lot of times we see this stuff when we're at market or um, some of the trade booths and stuff like that that we don't necessarily bring into the store but would like to. Um, the issue gets to be is sometimes, well, for the most part, just people don't know about it. And so whenever it's an unusual yeah, stone like that, it's a little bit more difficult and to sell. say they come in, they're either looking for the yellow or golden imperial topaz, or they're looking for the blue topaz, then you bring up, <clears throat> say, this has got just a touch of pink, and it's kind of a light, yeah, light color. Yeah, a lighter pink, almost a powdery pink. And we have one that's a little pinker in a, in a pendant, but it's got diamonds around it. It's a little difficult to kind yeah, of see. Yeah, so it's a little tough to see on the camera. And this is what most people think of when they think of... Imperial Topaz. Imperial Topaz. Yeah, that's a really pretty stone. Um, most of it's really clean. Every once in a while, you'll get a stone like this. It's got a little bit more uh, inclusions in it. Let me see if I can get this out to show here real quick. Oh, and that's the topaz. This. I didn't even know that was topaz. Yeah, this is the this this one we'd actually shown before because we actually had I had this as a rough piece and then we have a customer that oh, cut this for oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, um, okay. But this one you can see it's got it's got some inclusions kind of, in kind it. Of a softer color. Yeah, a little bit lighter in color, but um, it's actually still a really pretty stone after it was cut. Actually, it was better than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, it really was. So, um, with, with topaz, there's a wide range of colors, um, definitely a wide range of sizes. And the rarest and most expensive is the red. Yeah. Um, yeah. the imperial can get fairly expensive, especially for, for colored stones. Yeah. So we get some of these other, other colors. You can see the crystals. And then uh, most of these are elongated crystals. Yeah, and, and most of the stones, like the red topaz I saw, was an elongated pear shape. And what they're doing is they're cutting it to pick up as much weight as they can 
Now, so these are gonna be cut down the length of the crystal, like those. And then we've got another one. This is a, basically what they consider cognac color. Hence the uh, glass of cognac. And then the other thing I guess we didn't bring up is basically topaz is November's birthstone. It is, you know, you know. Oh, and there's, there we're getting into almost. Uh, so there's some really nice pinks here and you can actually see a pink topaz crystal. A lot of times, um, especially in maybe some uh, the wire woven jewelry, you'll see a lot of topaz crystals mm. that maybe are a little bit lower uh, clarity quality. Uh, but you'll see these elongated yeah. crystals that are actually now, really cool. I forget cool. what topaz is supposed to do. Do we know what that is? Our research, no idea. Our research person over there will probably look that up. And then... Uh, what do the topaz crystals do? We've got another pink here that's really pretty. Uh, let's see... Then so. the other thing is there's some topaz that's produced in the United <clears throat> States. Mm -hmm. I remember on the Weather Channel, I don't remember what that was called, but there was one guy there that kind of specialized in basically imperial topaz out of Colorado. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly where, where he was mining at. Well, his location was kind of secret anyways. Yeah. So the other thing is... Um, We've got treated topaz that is uh, some that are diffused and yeah, and then you have some that are coated and are really unusual looking. Um, most people what? see this as either mystic or rainbow rainbow topaz, which is this stuff here. This is actually being coated um, with a metal oxide. Uh, typically, they're going to be using either um, titanium or gold to coat those, and it's extremely thin. They're actually using it as a vapor coating, um, and it kind of... Vaporized gold, huh? Pretty much. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's, it's very unusual, because most people don't know this, but if you get gold thin enough, you can actually see through it. Um, it becomes transparent. And so by putting this on, on these on the surface of these stones, you can actually get this kind of um, opalescent um, color to the to the stones where they kind of diffuse the light a little bit into spectral colors. You know, and since the election's coming up, I'm going to kind of read what the topaz crystal does. But towards the last here, I'm going to say some of the politicians could use a little topaz. Uh-oh. So it says, topaz brings joy, generosity, abundance, and good health. It is known as a stone of love and good fortune. It releases tension, inducing relaxation. And topaz promotes openness and honesty, which we could use a little of that. Self-realization and self-control. Oh, and looky there, she brought some more stuff. And, and I'm going to say that somebody's got a really big imagination to, to come up with this. Why is that? Well, because unless you eat these things, I don't see how this is. Really... Well, it's the it's that vibration thing. Uh huh. Yeah. You, and some people may need a bigger piece than others. Just saying. Uh, the only way I see this having an, an actual effect on you, you get hit with it. That may. Uh... Uh, <laughs> you know, if you get, I guess, if somebody throws a piece of topaz at you then, yeah, you're probably going to be a little bit happier because, hey, instead of just throwing a plain old rock at you, at least they threw a gemstone at you, and it's pretty. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. yeah some, of, some of the first topaz discoveries of Brazil had colors ranging from rich reddish cognac oh. to vivid pinks. Well, I've seen richer than reddish cognacs. I've seen a red one. I've seen wealthy ones. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> These gems were used to grace the jewelry of the 18th and 19th century Russian Tsarinas. This earned the... Uh, Tsarinas. So basically the queens and yeah. princesses. That's just, a, that's just a fun word, though. I know. 
Czar is even kind of czar, even though it's spelled a little weird. This earned them the name Imperial Topaz. Yeah. Hardness of eight. Ooh. It says Topaz is particularly good for artists. It gives one access to the artistic creativity and increases one appreciation of beauty. Yeah, that'd be a good deal, too. I think pretty much anybody could write anything and somebody's going to believe it. Well, some of this is really old. So maybe they've been <laughs> talking to him for a long time about this. You know, it's, it's kind of... I think somebody's been sipping similar. on the cognac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, when it comes down to it, um, Topaz has a real big impact on the jewelry market, uh, mainly for its blue stones, large size, uh, durability, and cost. In multiple shapes. Yeah. In multiple sizes. Yeah. So it works really well. It lends itself really well to really unusual custom pieces and yeah. designs. Um, I really think that's a pretty stone. Yeah, that one is a pretty stone. And the great thing about it is, especially for us, is it sells really well. Um, the stone's colors are really attractive, and people like to wear them, and getting them in larger sizes without having an overwhelming amount of expense is is really attractive too so it works really really well for the jewelry industry and it helps that it's a really pretty and clean stone mm -hmm. um, it's also you know from a jeweler standpoint it's it's fairly easy to work with mm -hmm. um, it's not overly susceptible to chipping and breaking like some other gemstones are that are actually more expensive so that's that's a nice quality. And it has less of a pucker factor. It does, and we don't <laughs> want to talk about that term. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, we thank you guys for joining us today. If you guys have any questions uh, about topaz or any other gemstones, please feel free to send us a message or leave a comment on our video. Or come in and see us. Yes. If you'd like to see these in person and really... Uh, check out Topaz and what it has to offer and look at some really good examples of it. Uh, or you'd like to purchase some, please stop by our store at 4226 South Alameda here in the Town & Country Shopping Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, if you guys have any other questions that you'd like answered, you can always give us a call at 361-991-7565. Visit us online at suzannes-jewelers.com and always right here on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram to see more. So if you guys have any suggestions for uh, ep upcoming episodes, something you'd like us to talk about that's jewelry related, or you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave a comment or send us a message as well. But we thank you guys for joining us. We hope you guys have a great week, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.